welcome everybody. Hello, uh, my name is Mike. I am the founder of Job English. I have been helping international students since 2013 find jobs here in the UK. You may have seen our content on LinkedIn or YouTube or Facebook. Uh, we're really pleased to be here um, to serve you and to help you in any way that we can. And uh, we have uh, you know, a range of different services. What I would say is the purpose of the Q&A today is not really to talk about kind of like business, as it were. So if you have a question about any of our services, like feel free to drop me a message or an email. Um, the purpose of the Q&A today is really just to ask stuff that's on your mind, things you're curious about. Probably you're going to ask questions that no one else really can really give you a satisfactory answer to. And um, nothing's off the table. Happy to answer questions about anything. So if you just raise your little blue hands, or you can put your question in the chat. Let's go. I will, I'll get started with a few softball questions that I get asked all the time. So a couple of questions that are coming up quite a lot recently because people have gone back to their resident country and they'll say, can I come and find a job in the UK if I'm applying from insert country name? The answer is it's, it's really difficult. I would say it's next to impossible. The reason being is that it's exactly the same if I wanted to go and get a job in India or China or the United States. It's just a supply and demand issue. From an employer's perspective, they're going to want to hire people who are already based within the country. So they're not going to want to hire somebody who's based within another country. If you want to know what's the best entry, is to come back and study again. Um, I realise that's not the answer that people want here. So that's a quick one to answer about but should I or can I apply from another country and then fly back and come back on a visitor visa. Visitor visas don't work because as soon as it gets to the nitty gritty and they say, oh, what visa are you on? And you say you're on a visitor visa. They're not going to, uh, they're not going to hire you because they can't do anything. Uh, question number two, which I get asked all the time, which is, what's happening with the graduate route? When's the graduate route happen? Is it going to happen? Are they going to take it away? Um, the graduate route is coming in summer 2021. It's still the same as per the Home Office fact sheet. There is no limitations on, on the graduate route in terms of when people started. Currently, there's a preemptive cutoff date of people that potentially couldn't be given to students who start after April 6th. 2021. That's from an article that was brought up by um, St. George's University London. It's a bit recent information that's been given from the Home Office. Why don't we know about the graduate room? Because the Home Office will put out a consultation document, essentially what they call a working paper, where they'll say this is what we want to do mechanically in terms of the process. They'll put that out to the universities because it relates to students and then you know the mechanism will probably come out in summer 2021. Renu Kiza did a webinar about it, which I think was about two months ago and was really very good. They said, you know, likely kind of like June, July, but it's all, it's all basically hearsay until the Home Office said better. My advice to you is not to speculate. Do not be drawn into baseless speculation from other people because if they actually know what they're talking about, they'll tell you that we don't know any more than what the Home Office paper said in October uh, 2019. So, um, Alham asks, does PSW have specific dates like 20, like twice a year on a specific date or whoever, or whoever graduates can apply no matter what it is? Um, it doesn't have a specific date because essentially it's just going to be a continuation of your visa. So you're going to finish, then you're going to apply for a graduate route, which is much the same as the same mechanism, for example, as like tier five youth mobility scheme, right? So what I'd say to you is, is that you know, if you're studying and you started in September, then you're going to get the graduate route. You just have to be patient because everything's running slower than it has done. But don't feel like it's going to go away or someone's going to take it away from you. That's not the way that it works. Okay, so uh, Payal asks, Hi Mike, thank you for your time for answering my questions. You're welcome. Uh, where are companies who can offer the certificate of sponsorship advertising their jobs for international skilled workers outside of the UK? I mean, realistically, they're not. You know, if you look at something, for example, like the EU Skills Database, or you're looking at a relatively newer company like UK Hired, but this kind of ties into the fact that, like, you know, you need to be in the UK to work in the UK. Um, it's not a hard and fast rule. You know, if you're talking about, you know, okay, how can I end up in the UK? Well, then you'd work in an MNC in your home country, and you'd hope for a tier two intercompany transfer from your home country. So I've dealt with that with a couple of different cases from like Canada, the States, India, Mexico, 
um, that theoretically not I haven't had anything to do with that process because I'm not an immigration advisor. We've got the tier two and five sponsorship, which is here in the UK. But for all of you, if you're looking for an easy and searchable list of sponsors, um, you know, just use our web app, which is www.sponsortier2.com, which you can also sign up for for free updates and it'll tell you when new sponsors are added. So these are the companies that can sponsor for visas. I think that's added every Wednesday and uh, Friday. So of course you can start from the home office list, tier two and five sponsors, about 32,000 companies. You sift that down to about 25,000 and then you probably sift that down to a thousand or less if you're talking about large companies who have a wide variety of opportunities as opposed to your kind of garden variety restaurant and so on and so forth. Any more questions? Don't be shy. Yeah, so um, Jean, Jean sends a message and said, my visa expires the end of March. Would you say it's a lost cause? Or with some luck, I could still get a sponsorship. Been looking at sponsortt.com and other sites for a few months now. Any last minute advice? To be blunt, it probably is a lost cause. Um, the reason being is that we really look for about three months or more left. So for example, when we take clients, we really like them to have six months left on their visa. Um, obviously you're, you're kind of just unlucky because you're at the very end of sort of what, what's happening with everything. The, the thing is as well is that companies are slow because of everything that's happening with COVID, because of their restrictions that they're finding in terms of having workplace in the office. So really, you know, I think this year was a particularly difficult year to be um, an international student because the opportunities are reduced. And, you know, for me, I would kind of approach it in one or two ways. I would basically either go back with a plan to return, or I would go back with a plan to enter, you know, an MNC and then, you know, see if I could get uh, an ICT, intercompany transfer. And I'd be looking at the same types of companies, so big tech, finance companies, engineering, um, you know, stuff that has strong multinational presence. With the awareness that that as well is competitive when it comes to international students. I've heard a lot of uh, people from outside of the UK. So unfortunately, I don't have any, any last minute advice. Um, and um, I really do sympathise with, with, the, with the issue. So Amira asks, are there currently companies who give internships and in like six months higher? I've been looking everywhere and could not find. Um, so first of all, kind of what I'd say is that, you know, look at, there are, there are, we, we target deliberately multinationals uh, because multinationals have the biggest um, supply of jobs. This is a supply and demand problem, right? So when you're sort of looking at that, it's sort of, well, are you, are you starting off with, have you applied for the largest companies? <laughs> is the quality of your applications good enough? You know, there are plenty of job hunting resources out there. Um, we've got it, if you just go to jobreadyenglish.com, you'll find that under our resources page, there's like uh, job hunting resources. So, you know, I'm not, I'm not here to act as Google. Um, what I'd say to you is that it's not about looking everywhere. Try to be smart with your job search. So regularly, I'd say I speak to about 10, 10 different students a week, maybe on the phone, um, and get many more emails and different types of questions that come through. So um, what I would say is that you need to be smart. So personally, I wouldn't use LinkedIn, I wouldn't use Indeed, and I wouldn't be random about your job search. I think that's really important. A lot of students are being random, and that's really wasteful because it's basically like, um, you know, quite playing a game of darts by turning the lights off, uh, spinning around and around and then just throwing darts and hoping that it hits the board because there's so many other possibilities plus you're restrained by a visa. So what I'd say to you is that have a really consistent um, job search strategy. And what I'd say is I'll put a link into the description, which will be for our uh, Zero to Job ebook which gives like a consistent a job strategy that you can have. Um, so I'll kind of leave that question there because we've already really sort of answered that in that ebook. I think it would be very helpful. The Burge asks, I've been trying in NHS for a year and roles in my stream public health. No positive reply till now. Are there any websites which sort of the visa speaking sponsoring jobs in other English speaking countries? Not that I'm aware of. I mean, the closest that you have there, Burge, here is ukhire.com. Um, technologically, in terms of 
kind of a, a sort of aggregator for the visa specific roles. Um, UK Hide is probably doing the best job here in the UK, as well as student service. Uh, when it comes to other countries, I could not really comment. Uh, it's not something that I know anything about. But I would say the NHS is fairly fickle when it comes to sponsorship. I mean, there is the health and care visa, which came out uh, a couple of months ago. That's worth looking into. But that's for really specific shortage um, occupational codes. So I would see if you could uh, meet under those codes. And also don't forget, you know, get a second opinion. What I would say is if you're consistently failing at something, it might be worth you just getting a second opinion from somebody. I'm not saying you have to get it from a professional like us, but just get someone to look at your CV, to look at your applications, get someone to see if your method is right, you know, because otherwise you're just going to make the same mistake somewhere else. It's not about finding more jobs. When somebody comes to me and says, oh, um, I've applied for 50 jobs and no one's replied to me, I'm like, maybe your applications are bad. Maybe you're just not really applying to good jobs. Right? Um, and I realize it's difficult to hear because nobody wants to hear that what they're doing is bad. But it's worth thinking about. Instead of just blindly thinking that the system is against you, maybe it's worth thinking about is what I'm doing good? And then the next thing, and the next thing, and the next thing, right? And this kind of system, systematic approach to applications rather than just like, we need more jobs. Well, if your applications are bad, it doesn't, doesn't matter how many jobs you apply to, you're still not going to get through to the next round right so something something to think about so abby asked can you tell me when psw started so abby you weren't here uh no psw says it'll start in summer 2021 that's what the home office says and then hopefully the home office will give us some more information in the next month or two but i do understand it's quite frustrating we're actually um aggregating and updating one of our in-depth guides around the graduate group which is the post-study work visa so we're going to be releasing that maybe tomorrow, maybe next week. So we'll send that on the email. And of course, for all of you, um, if you're not already subscribed, I would say to you, like, if you want to keep updated, just come and subscribe to us. We push out a newsletter uh, once a week and we can kind of keep you updated, right? So um, Alhan asks, as an international student without UK work experience, how do you suggest us to build a strong set of skills in a competitive job environment. So this is delicious. I quite like this question, actually. Um, and I'm going to break this down for you. So you might say, well, how can I be a more competitive applicant? Right, so this is interesting. So the first, the first thing to think about is competitive in terms of what? Right, so for example, how do you become, and, and what I tend to do with my clients all the time, I talk about sport a lot, not because I'm a sport nut, because it's really easy to visualize. So I'm going to talk about football, right? So how do you become a more competitive footballer? Well, it depends on your position. Um, do you need to run faster? Do you need to be more agile? Do you need to be better at headers, at tackling, at passing? Now, for those of you who don't like football, you might be like, oh my God, what's he talking about? Because the reason why I'm saying is, so let's look at Elham's question. She's saying, um, how can I have build a stronger set of skills in a competitive job market? Well, number one, be hyper-specific about what you want to do. Not so specific and so competitive. For example, you say, I only want to be a management consultant at Boston Consulting Group. Good luck. I'm not saying you can't do it, but you probably are really kind of reducing the odds of success. And I'm choosing consulting because that's what Elham talked about at the very start of this call. So let's kind of get a little bit wider. Let's say, I want to be a good consultant. Cool. Um, which actually means you can apply for a reasonably wide number of companies. The Big Four, you know, Accenture, IBM, Google, Microsoft, and of course, you know, those you know, very uh, nice and shiny management consulting firms, right? So what are the skills that make a good consultant? So that's kind of the first place that I start. I'd be like, what makes a good consultant? And then I'd go and look at those skills and go, okay, well, they have to be good problem solvers. They have to be good at explaining complex information and several in a, in a simple way. They have to have good research skills. They have to have the ability to build clients really well, um, to formulate good problems. Probably, you know, some technical skills when doing this, like um, you know, data analysis, or putting together really compelling PowerPoints and presentations. Cool, well, you've got five skills that you need to build on. So you might say, well, how can I be a better communicator? Well, that's easy. Go and join Toastmasters. 
Now I'm joining some meetups. Now I'm speaking to people. So the truth is, you're not going to get better at something by wishing it. You're going to get better at something by practicing it. So to the footballer who wants to get better at running, he needs to run. <laughs> you can't just read about running. And then maybe he's running, but he's running slowly like me, right? And then the coach is like, no, you need to run fast because you need to run fast during the game and catch somebody, right? So you need to have practice that is as realistic and comparable to the real thing. So you might say, um, oh, well, I'm actually, I'm really good at PowerPoint. Cool, show me your work. Show me a good picture that you've done. So very often, um, a lot of times when dealing with students, you're trying to find a complex answer to a simple problem. So, you know, take a coder, for example, and he'll say, I'm really good at code. And I say, cool, show me your work. And they go, oh no, I don't actually have anything that people can see. And I'd be like, well, that's completely pointless. It's like an artist who hasn't, can't show me any art. I'm not saying you can't be an artist. What I'm saying is show me your work. Right? So can you clearly demonstrate what you've done? What about some pictures? What about writing a blog? You know, what about creating a presentation? There's actually quite a lot that can be done to build up a strong set of skills, but it involves doing and not thinking and not reading. No, reading is good, but you know, we're not talking about knowledge. We're talking about the application of that knowledge to be able to show some um, definitive results, right? And a lot of people just get stuck on the, the knowledge but they're not showing me their application of knowledge, right? Uh, I hope that helps. I realised that was kind of windy, but it was a reasonably vague question, so I just wanted to sort of you know, get in. Cool. Cool. So, like, any other questions? Anything else? I think I think we haven't heard from, so who else have we heard from? I haven't heard from Wong, Toyin, uh, Hamid, Maureen, Koi, Payet, uh, Abantika, Abe, well, come and ask some questions, guys. I'm sure whether you, you know, don't just spectate, participate. Okay. Well, look, um, you know, if you, if you guys don't know about us, you can find us at uh, www.jobreadyenglish.com. You know, if you'd like something else like this again, you can send me through, uh, send me through. If you'd like to speak to me, uh, you can send me an email to mike at jobreadyenglish.com. So, Wong says, is there any tips you can give for ASIN video interviews like online assessments? Um, right, okay. So, um, there are no quick fixes to a specific problem, right? So, what people basically say is they'll say, Oh, do you have any tips? They'd be like, Yeah, practice. So, for example, let's break down the principles of a video interview. Number one, your English needs to be good, yeah? So, your English needs to be of a conversational standard or better. Number two, you need to be able to answer based upon um, a smooth period of time, so two minutes. And also you need to practice answering specific questions in two minutes. So that's kind of the one, two, three step of thinking about answering video interviews. And then you need to practice, you need feedback, and then improvement. Practice, feedback, and improvement. Is there a shortcut to that process? No, not in my experience, right? And I've, I've prepared clients for eight years so anybody who asks for a shortcut is basically saying, um, is there a way that I can do it this easy? And the answer is no, right? And if you want to see um, some tips, I think if you go and look at our YouTube channel, I think I've done some stuff like here are some tips about video interviews and I've broken down some video interviews, but there are no, there's no like quick and easy solution for what you're talking about. Yeah, I'll put the, uh, I'll put the link in here. Cool, we've got a flood of questions. All right, let's go. Oh, blimey, there's loads of questions. This is getting getting interesting. Okay, are there any websites which decorate our CV and cover letter as per the job requirements? For free? No. I mean, you can use stuff that's really, like I would just go and use Google. So what I'd say is like, don't be lazy, go and use Google. Like, go and find stuff for yourself. Um, no one's giving out free cover letters. They're giving out free generic templates. But what I'd say is, is like go and do your homework and go and have a look. The best thing I've seen, um, you know, anything that I've kind of highlighted can be found on sort of, we've got a little like job hunting, uh, job hunting resources uh, page where we recommend sort of different resources that we like. Um, but ultimately like you're gonna get what you pay for, right? And if you want it for free, it's probably crap. And you know that, right? So, um, and I'm just being really honest about it. So yeah, here it is for job hunting tours. Okay, what's next? 
How do you, so Elham says, how do you see the possibility of getting sponsored job while we're studying the current UK situation? Um, I think it's all right. So the, the last figures that come out, which is 2018 19, was about 9,200 switches from tier four to tier two, which is about 3.6% of tier four population, which isn't bad, it's about one in 25, so that's up from about like 2.5 to 3%. Um, of course, COVID has thrown a span in the works. So if you have a look at our YouTube channel, we just published a video today with Valeria from My Grad. <clears throat> in it, we talked about kind of 2021 strategy. It's definitely slower. And I would definitely start sooner. So that's my kind of tip. I know there are less jobs. There are 10% less jobs now from Times Top 100 employers. You can find that in the Graduate High Flyers report, right? And I actually wrote about that in the Zero to Jobs ebook. So I quote all my sources and data. So there are less jobs, but you knew that, right? That was fairly obvious. But you definitely need to start sooner. Um, I wouldn't leave it until the last minute, for sure, for sure. Um, so we're kind of you know, you're sort of a little bit late for September starts, but um, I'd say the possibility is it's pretty much reduced but as much as home students. You're not at a greater or lesser disadvantage, which I think is a, so maybe a better way to look at the question. I hope that answers that. Um, uh, Maureen, I graduated from Nottingham Trent University. My student visa expired and I'm currently in my home country. Can I still get a job? Um, yeah, so I, I sort of answered this, Maureen. Um, probably not. And the reason why I say that is because it's the same, it's the same issue, right? Wherever your home country is, you know, I'm, I'm very unlikely to, um, uh, an employer in Malaysia is really unlikely to employ me because I'm not in Malaysia. You know, by the nature of the process, when I, when I advertise a job, I need someone to work there. So what I'd say is, you know, plan to return or, you know, go to an MNC, which may have some form of intercompany transfer program. So Abby asked what type of skills required for tier two jobs. So this is a good question because it's in the sense that it's too vague. So you, you need to pick your target. You need to choose your outcome carefully. In the zero to job ebook, I explain that the most likely jobs that are going to provide sponsorship are audit, finance, operations, and technology. Those four roles. They're non-specific. They're probably eligible as long as you've got a two, two, one. Sorry, um, a two, one, a bachelor's. And you want to find the skills for those jobs. Go and read the job descriptions, right? What I say to you is if you're not getting a job, a lot of times it's because you just need to be, I wouldn't say you're being lazy, but you're just, you're just not reading the job description. They tell you, right? Or if not, go and search similar job descriptions. But there's no blanket skill that applies for all jobs. It's like it's just saying, um, you know, what makes what makes an attractive partner? Well, it depends who you are and what you want, doesn't it? Right? So be more specific with your questions. So Koi asks, should one apply to a graduate role with no slash little slash slightly relevant work experience or study master and use a two-year post-study visa to increase the chance of sponsor? I think they're two different questions. So first of all, I would definitely try to get a job now. And then if you are unable to get a job, then apply for a master's. Personally, in the UK, having a master's doesn't really make that much of a difference when it comes to employability. It's a skills issue. Only if you're studying something which is very technical. Yeah, so if something's really technical, then yes, it, it will be good that you have these uh, skills that you learn from your master's. But just for the sense of studying a master's, if it's from a visa point of view, yes, but the master's for such. Um, so I would try. So I would test, get data, unsuccessful, update, you know, uh, get feedback, update that process. And then if unsuccessful, do master's. I hope that makes sense. So, um, Toyin, hi, interesting discussion. Can you assist with getting maths teaching jobs or interview with costs? It kind of depends on the candidate, Toyin. That's kind of a salesy question. So what I'd say to you is that I will send you my email. We do offer paid services. Feel free to get in touch with me by email, but it's not something that I can sort of really uh, answer there and then. Hot biscuits, it's a lot of questions. Okay. Um, oh, sorry, I've sent the YouTube channel to Toya. <laughs> I'll send that to everybody. Okay, bear with me, guys. Thank you for all the questions. It was really good. Okay. So, Toya again are. Uh, oh, no, why? Can I? Okay, good. But, so, Avantika asks 
Can a graduate student get sponsored without experience? Of course, of course you can. So this is a really common thing like, oh, but I've got no experience, it doesn't matter. So if you look at the eligibility requirement of a job, um, I think I was doing this earlier, right? I'll, I'll give you, let me see if I can get you an example. Um, because I, you know, as a teacher, I like to show people stuff and save them. So um, say, for example, you wanted to go and get a job at PwC, right? Who is the biggest graduate employer? And you have a look at their job description. So if you have a look here, and I'm going to share a screen with you. So here's PwC's website, right? Job description, blah, blah, blah. So this is what you'll, what you'll do. Look at this, what you'll need. You'll need to have or be on course for a 2-1 degree in any subject. We're going to say you need work experience. We're going to say you need to. A lot of the time as well, we have to please, please try and separate the fiction from the facts. So a lot of times people are operating from a position of prejudice because of what someone has said or they've just seen a meme or they read something or read it, right? What does the job description say? Every job description, of course graduate students can get sponsored by this meme. They do it all the time. <laughs> so why can't you? Yeah. So try to have a beginner's mindset. Try not to operate from a position of prejudice. It's really important. One, I find myself usually talking in scripts that would sound forced into robotic. Is there any way that can make you sound more natural? Oh, hell yes. So, um, actually, one, we've got some courses that are coming out on Friday which will address that. Um, a lot of this is about practice, practicing without the script, taking the script away, or you can use an auto cue. Um, what I'd say is if you go and sign up, I think we've got a course coming out which is called Great Interview Scripts. And it's like ten pounds, and it literally answers that question. Just to so uh, you know, sign up to our newsletter, um, and you'll get informed when that when that comes out. Because I don't want to talk about sales, I don't want to talk about our products. So you said, so why do you sound robotic? Because you're reading from the screen. Like, please note that PwC is unable to sponsor any candidates. Blah 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 blah. blah. Why is it robotic? Because there's no emotion being able to inject into my voice. Because I'm not thinking like I'm having a conversation. You have this sing song, lilting cadence that happens based upon the impact, the emphasis, and tone of what I'm saying. The truth is, is that you need to not have a script. The script is probably your crutch because you feel like your English is good enough, so you probably need to work on your English. That's the kind of long answer. The short answer is if you want to kind of get some just actionable tactics, just sign up to our newsletter and we'll it'll update you when the course uh, comes out. I think on Friday. Okie dokie. So Toy and asked most of the jobs for international applicants ask for people from America and Europe. Uh, but if you are from West Africa, excuse you, most applications ask for the right to work which you can't get without a letter of employment. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> so that wouldn't happen in the UK because that's against the law. So a British company cannot exclude somebody based upon where they're from, but it can exclude someone based upon where they are. Because if I run a bakery, I want somebody, and I need someone to be there at 4am, it's not very helpful if they're coming from France. And my bakery is in London, is it? So it's not discriminatory, because I feel like the kind of saying it is, but it's not. It's just saying, we need you to be here. The right to work is, yeah, because that, those, that, that's the law. So again, you have to be in the UK on an eligible visa to work in the UK. And the best way to do that is with a tier four student visa and switch that over. Um, there's there's nothing wrong with that. That's just our lead. that's just our regulations. That's our laws. Uh, Hyatt says uh, completed graduation from London South Bank. I left UK in December 2020. I was wondering how to get back to UK. I've tried and applied to different companies so far, so no luck. Yeah, Hyatt, I I feel for you, but again, you know, you've got to be in the UK. Uh, unfortunately, so I'll try not to spend very much time on. Yeah, so Abe makes a very good point saying ICT visas do not lead to settlement. I allow I've received emails about my school being good. Um, yeah, so I understand obviously the way that ICT is structured is a constant that you're having to update and review the process. But again, it's, it's, a, it's a choice because now you're adding an additional condition on what you want. And so if you want settlement, you're better off coming back and studying, right? So um, even though I recognize that, I don't really want to stray too much in the territory of talking about visas. What I say to you is that, well, if you need that, if you want to settle, then you need to be here on a tier four visa, because those are the conditions that you've imposed. That's a different conditions as if I just want to be in the UK, 
and working. So Mohammed asked, time like recently, I've gone through EY numerical reasoning test stage and then taken the test. I'm very confident I've been 100% accurate, yet yeah, failed to move to the next stage. What might be the reason for this? I've got feedback. I've got feedback for just strength assessment, online assessment. Is there any strategy behind you know which main strengths are the organisation specifically looking for? Okay. So talking specifically about EY, it's really difficult to know. I think if you've done the best that you can, then you should take that as a given. I don't think doubting yourself is really helpful. There are many variables which are outside of your control. It could simply be that just closed applications. Then that's not your fault. They just closed the application, right? Getting feedback for the strength set. So in terms of knowing what companies are looking for, again, job description, core values. Simple as that. Just looking at the job description and core values. Yeah. So I can I can really comment on EY because there's nothing there's nothing really to comment on. And what I say is don't get caught up on the failures, just push on. Moving on to the next stage. Yeah. Okay. Alright. I think that is all of the questions. Thanks guys, this has been really good. I'm just gonna put this in the chat again. So if you want to drop me an email, my email is mike at jobreadingnews.com. To be honest, if it's just sort of random questions I may or may not answer. But if you're interested in our service, you can go to www.jobreadingnews.com. The best way to keep in touch with everything who we are and what we do is to subscribe to our newsletter. And anybody else, final call for any questions? Yeah. Um, just quickly as sort of a, a yes no vote, uh, if you could just put yes in the chat if this is something that you'd like to, to do again or something you'd like to participate in again, just send a yes to me so I can just gauge. Okay, yes, yes. Anybody else? Yes, yes, yes. Oh damn, okay. <laughs> okay, cool. That's awesome. Yeah, I think that's enough people for me to do it again. So I'll probably do it this time again next Wednesday. Um, guys, thank you so much. Like I said, you will probably come, will probably break this video down and uh, throw it up on our YouTube. Thanks, thank you, everybody. And um, yeah, thanks for coming. Sign up to the newsletter, and I wish you all the best of luck. Thank you very much.